Futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Good afternoon, all. Ira Epstein, back from vacation. I took off three business days, and I'm back in. And today is Wednesday, the 5th of July, 2017. This is your agriculture update. We're just after 2.15 p.m. Central Daylight Time. The big event when I was gone was the rally on Friday that began off of soybeans when the market literally exploded due to, and I think you realize what this was due to, due to the event of the USDA stocks and acreage report. And when you looked at it, first thing that happened is I'd been prepping you for a long time in the previous weeks in the ag that our firm thought that we did put in a major bottom. Well, that's a fait complete. You know, that market soared. Now what's happening is the other crops, corn and beans, you always get questions as to their condition, how much acreage actually went in, and that's what's kicking them up. And the beans continued on today with another 13.5 cent rally, the wheat another nickel, and the corn a 3.5 cent rally. Dollar index has been, if you take a look at it, stable here at the 96 level. And of course, you've seen a good sell-off from the highs in the euro currency as uh, we talk about that. When I come to the weekly chart of beans, you're up 34 cents for this week. And if you go back to last week when I, was, uh, when I left, you were up 37 and three quarter cents. So you've had big week to week gains, which have finally kicked the market up over this previous high of 980 and a half to 981. So that's pretty strong. On an area chart of closes based on daily closes, not weekly, you've gone now from 9.11 as a low to today's rally high close of 9.94 and a quarter. So you have 80, what, 83 cents of a rally. That's pretty big. If you take a look at the past two days gain, so we come into the market and uh, we come back to, let, let's go right here to the Friday, the 30th on these reports. Look at how the market takes off, 30 cent gain then, now you add another 26 cents, that's 56 cents through Monday, and with today another 13. One of the things I had told you before I left was you often get a 50 cent plus move in soybeans off of this USDA report that came out. Go back on your history, look at them, you'll see what I'm saying. So I'm not finding anything unusual, but it's met what it normally does. The question, of course, is can it hold it? Does it fall back in to try to fill gaps in the chart? We'll have to wait and see. In terms of the swing line study, you certainly have a clear pattern of higher lows, higher highs. So the fireworks worked properly. Whether it was up or down, you get a big move. Number two, you're in an uptrend. You're over the 18-day average. That gives you bullish bias. And you split right through the 100-day average uh, of closes like it didn't exist. You got up to this big number. In terms of that big number, I'd be a bit cautious now. Why? Two days in a row over the upper Bollinger Band. You know, you don't stay more than five. And my rule of thumb is each day counts as one of those five percentage points as the rule of thumb. I've seen seven days in a row. Beyond that, it's very, very rare. So I look for the norms. And the norms, when you get a move like this, is at any point you can get that correction in this market and you are overbought. Bullish, absolutely. Market might want to fill that gap in the chart and supports back at 939. Buying over an upper Bollinger Band, you can do it. I, I certainly don't teach that. When we come to the August meal, the market's now got a pattern that if you take a look, you actually have right here, and I'll show you this. On the swing line, the low of this day was 295.90. Market comes up, comes down, hits 295.80, and then goes up. So you have what's called a lower low and a higher high into the 100-day average of closes, and like soybeans, you're two days over the upper Bollinger Band, also overbought. So, are the markets getting ready to say, okay, that big thrust off that report on Friday, uh, it's been absorbed? That's the school of thought that I'm coming from. That does not mean it's not bullish. Let's understand. Everything on the chart has basically got 
upside momentum over the 18-day average, but you're at key resistance points, so you can get a break in this for no reason at all. Sort of like when I was talking about crude oil before I left, and I, I know I'd gone on Bloomberg, and I said it was 40, under 43, and I said, you know, this market's just ready to get a bounce in it. It doesn't mean I'm bullish, a bounce. Well, these grains might be ready for a break. Doesn't mean I'm bearish. Same type of thinking. The soybean oil hit the upper Bollinger Band three days in a row. Doesn't seem to be able to get over it. Still moving to the upside. It has a pattern of a lower low, and this high took out that high. So you have no trend on the swing line. You have upside bias, and you have a market with a 71.63 stochastic that is overbought. These markets might need to take a breather. In the corn market, you now have a pattern of higher lows, higher highs. Something else happened of great interest. This is called when the moving averages kiss each other, and that's what they're doing. Instead of getting a bearish crossover where the 18-day average gets over the 100, it instead just stayed right with it, and you can see how they're playing with that now. So very interesting, overbought condition. If it wants to extend, you might be able to get up to the 410 and a half area, the upper Bollinger Band. But I'll be very surprised if farmers, when you were down 30 cents lower, aren't taking advantage and doing some hedging up here. I'd be really surprised to see that. The wheat market's a different animal. We knew that Minneapolis was a big problem. And by the way, if you looked at Minneapolis wheat today, it went up to a high, then dropped nearly, what, 95 cents. It's a monster drop. Then came back for not a very dramatic uh, move up or down at the end of the day. It's a difficult market to trade in there because it's so thin in its volume. Chicago's where the bigger volume obviously is, as is Kansas City, I believe. And as you can see, three days in a row over the upper Bollinger Band. What about the stochastic? Is it embedding? Well, right here, embedding. Right here, embedding, but not the day before. You're just gravely overbought, not with an embedded reading, and certainly not trending. You did have a bullish crossover in wheat that I was paying attention to way back here. And the market, when it did it, it didn't go up and make a new high immediately. It sort of stalled, fell back to the 18-day average area, and then the market began its move on Thursday the 29th, got to the upper Bollinger Band. I hadn't left that day, so I, I know I couldn't do an update for you. Then you get the report, and it just kept moving on to the upside. That's what you got off that USDA report. In the sugar market, it, it's do or die time. If the market takes out 13.99, it gets bearish again. If the market takes out right now 14.74, no reason you can't make a run for the upper Bollinger Band, but you're already in overbought territory. So I think what the pros will do, they're going to try to see if they can drive the market under this 1399 and see what's there as long as you don't get up and make the higher highs first. So interesting time, but you're sort of right at that key number here. Coffee maintains its bullishness right now. Momentum up but overbought. Higher lows, higher highs over the 18-day average. I would say that anything near 132 and a half, 132.15 is probably going to be met with some pretty good profit taking at that point. Cocoa market made a run for both the 100 day and the 18 day average of closes while I was out of town. It stalled at the uh, 100 day, which is often the case, and the market pulled back to the 18, looking to see what's next. The trend remains up, but the risk is fairly substantial. If one were buying the market here, you're not wrong on the swing line study until you get under 1864. That's a heck of a rally. And if you bought here, your resistance is still 2008. Now, clear 2020, maybe you can get yourself up to the upper Bollinger Band. I don't know. Momentum still to the upside. Cotton market, interesting day in cotton. The market on uh, Monday fell back after making a higher high, went down today, made a low under that high, in fact, cleared. This right here 6686 and by the end of the day was able to reverse itself and close higher because you lost the embedded reading as i was in town last week i said i still think price and the 18 day average are going to come together i have not changed my overall theory of that cattle market while i was gone had its run to the 18 day average peaked out on monday and today you're coming back down the market has got the swing line up, but it's unable to close over the 18-day average here. And momentum 
well, it's sort of drifting back to the downside. Difficult chart. Feeder cattle's an ugly chart. You've got the higher high and the lower low pattern. That's not a trend. Momentum pointing down. The bias is now down because you're under the 18-day average. Support back here at 140, let's call it 140-100 to 140-67 and a half. That, those are the support numbers. Obviously, a lot of traders will be looking for Chinese export business, what the cash bids are going to be. And at this time of the year, cattle's not one of the favorite eating items, uh, like when you get into the cooler months. It's right now, obviously, the barbecue season. People do eat the steaks, but it's a lot of pork. And, and chicken, of course. When you take a look at the hog market, you did make a lower low, you've got a higher high, now you've got two days up and over the upper Bollinger, actually today closed under it, I'm taking that back, I'm looking at the close right now. So you close back under it, you're at a resistance point, the momentum of the market is overbought and you're not really trending. You've got a market that's gone from a low to a higher Bollinger Band and in the process widening them both out but really not able to sustain a move one way or the other, and I think that's important. You know, now you start looking again at the seasonals. Now, let me tell you, I, I looked at more research last night. When I came back, and when I go away, I try not to look at charts, try not to read the journal or anything else, and don't watch financial TV. The beauty is where I went up to, we barely had cell phone service, let alone internet. So it was great, and it, yeah, it was architectural digest type cabin, I admit that, but you don't get a lot of that. And uh, we, we went and we didn't turn on the direct TV or any of the services you would need to get it up there. But as soon as I got home, I started looking at the seasonals. Now the nice thing is Moore's put out both the July and the August seasonals. So if you're a trader that looks for the season, example, I know it's summertime, I know it's supposed to be hot, but the seasonal and natural gas is down right now, not up. People don't realize that. What about the meats? What about the grains? Well, there's a lot of trades here. How do you get access to it? They make it available for two weeks. You get to see uh, how the market has fared over a 15-year period. They only list trades that have worked, I think, 12 out of the 15 years. Then they give you write-ups as to what's going on. Now, if a trade doesn't win out of the, uh, thir the next year after 12 out of 15, it's dropped, but new ones come in. And it's got how many days profitable, how many days not. Does it always work? Here is a guarantee from me about it. Nothing always works. <laughs> so you look at seasonals to get an idea of why should things be working or not working? What's the fundamental influences at any point in the year? They put it all together in both a regular futures way and then what they do is they also do it on a spread basis. So for those of you that like those type of analysis, it's all written there. You can click it. You get everything you want. And it has interactive charts. You can look at bull years, bear years, and neutral years to see what these different chart patterns were. And as I said, they're interactive, so you can work with it. You get a two-week access free. How do you get it? Just give us a call, 866-973-2077. Go to our website, www.irapstein.com. If you click up here, what will happen is you'll see an icon. Click on that icon. It'll take you to the forum page or underneath us on a number of websites. It'll say, click here for IRA's uh, free offers. Do so, and away you go. I'm Irapstein. It's great to be back, and I feel very refreshed. You have a good day. I'll see you in the other videos in a few minutes.